You may have heard the phrase recently that soft data is flashing warning signs for the economy. This is certainly true, but what exactly does that mean? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this video. Stick around and you'll learn the key differences between soft data and hard data and how they both relate to today's complicated economic backdrop. Okay, so what is the difference between soft data and hard data? Well, soft data, as you see here on the right, is survey-based. It is sentiment-driven, so it's based on emotion. And it's forward-looking, so it's anticipating future economic activity. What is hard data? Hard data is quantitative. It is reported economic activity, and it's backward-looking. So it's series that tell you what happened in the past, but it's real data that's measured. So... I think this cartoon that I put together on the left sums up things pretty well. Soft data is the fortune teller saying that uh, inflation will ease in the future. But hard data is the accountant who's looking at the data and says, well, actually, C CPI, so inflation, was up 0.4% last month. So here's the trade-off. Soft data reflects expectations about the future, so it can give you a head up heads up on where economic activity is going, but it can also move ahead of the facts. So sometimes it can move in the wrong direction. Hard data, on the other hand, reflects what's actually happened, but it often lags behind real economic shifts. So stuff is normally changing in the economy before we get the reported hard data. So there's a back and forth that most investors and people must do you have to look at the soft data to get a sense of where the economy is going, but then you need to check back in periodically with the hard data to make sure the soft data isn't, you send, isn't sending you down the wrong path or isn't a head fake. So that brings us to the three important points I wanna make in this video. First, we're gonna look at some examples of hard data and soft data in these tables. So you see hard data on the left, and this is all real economic data, as I mentioned in the last slide. It's the unemployment rate, it's CPI, it's PPI, so different inflation measures. It's retail sales, GDP is a hard data point. Um, we have housing starts. There's a bunch of hard data points. These are normally reported on a monthly or sometimes weekly basis um, by some sort of government agency. It's real measurable economic data that actually happened. On the right, we see a list of some soft data series and we use these a lot. We have the ISM Manufacturing PMI. We have the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report. We use that one a lot alongside the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index. These are all surveys. We have the Regional Fed Survey Report. So, you know, all of them have survey reports. Uh, I believe so. But here we just list the Philly Fed and the New York Empire State one. And then Housing Market also has some soft data with the NAHB. Take some time, review these lists, um, just different data points that fall into different categories. Uh, hopefully it makes sense to you why, you know, survey data is in soft data and the government reported numbers are in the hard data. So let's get into the three important points uh, and I'll cover these on following slides. One, soft data is more volatile than hard data. Two, soft data tends to lead hard data. And three, soft data in hard data do diverge from time to time. So number one, soft data is more volatile than hard data. So looking at this chart here, we have in the blue a soft data index from Bloomberg, and in the red we have a hard data index from Bloomberg. You'll see on these two axes that they're the same, right? So the left axes and the right axes are the exact same numbers, so they're plotted in the same uh, plane. And you'll see that the blue soft data series has much bigger swings than the hard data series does. And this makes sense, right? Because soft data is based on people's emotions, which are more volatile than the actual reported economic data. So you might say, you know, we talked about the trade-offs earlier, but you know, hard data is really stable. Um, why don't I just wait a little bit extra time for the real numbers to come out why am I wasting my time trying to project those numbers using more volatile, maybe some could say less reliable data series like the soft data series? Well, that brings us to point two, 
which is that soft data series tend to lead hard data series. And this makes a little bit of intuitive sense, right? So emotions eventually affect real world decisions. Again, I think that's intuitive. You make decisions based on how you're feeling. That's true of individuals. That's true of companies. Um, so these survey related data sets, the soft data surveys, they're giving us information about how people are currently feeling about the future. And that then informs the decisions that they're going to make. And I think this chart right here is a really great example of that. And it's really intuitive. So in the blue, we have a soft data series, the NFIB. So the small business optimism index I actually included this series, um, or version of it in one of my previous videos, if you want to go check that out. Um, but what this series is, is the amount of small businesses within the survey that say their biggest problem is poor sales. So again, you see a chart like this, the chart looks really good, but let's back out and make sure it makes sense. So a bunch of small companies say their issue is with sales. If your issues with sales, you're probably not going to be hiring more people if you're worried about revenue coming in the door. So then it would make sense that as more and more companies were worried about their sales, that the unemployment rate would tick higher. And that's exactly what we see here, right? With this relationship, it's a very close chart. The series move closely together as more and more companies are worried about sale about their sales that eventually flows through to the unemployment rate. So if you were just relying on the hard data series here, the unemployment rate, you would be behind the curve of someone who was looking at the NA N NFIB uh, biggest problem series, right? They would have a general sense that the unemployment rate was set to move higher. Again, it's not perfect, which we'll get to on the next slide. But over the course of three months, they'll have a little bit of a heads up on you. And so I said we would talk about this in the next slide. And that is point three. And that is that these data series simply do diverge from time to time and is not necessarily a sign to panic. And I think this is important when we move on to the last two slides, which is going to cover today's economic backdrop and why soft data and hard data has become such a big conversation right now. So here we see the same chart, just different time frames. We have the soft data consumer confidence. So consumers telling you how you're feeling and the hard data consumer spending, which is, you know, the real number of how much consumers are actually spending. There actually isn't really a strong lead time here as you know, there's not much of a lag between how consumers are feeling and what they're spending. Right. And I think that makes a little bit of intuitive sense. Whereas if me as a consumer, I'm not feeling good, I'm not going to spend today. Right. So the consumer spending that I might spend not happening. So here we can see it's diverged in two ways in the past before, right? So in the early nineties, the soft data series, consumer confidence fell, but consumers were still spending money. Eventually the series sunk up again. And on the right, we can see the opposite occurred. So the soft data series, consumer confidence rose ahead of COVID while the hard data series fell. I, unfortunately, I had to cut the slide here because COVID really messed with this data and it would sort of ruin the point I was trying to make. Um, but just, just goes to show that this data can diverge from time to time. So that brings us to today. Here's why people are concerned. And that is because we have seen a big, big move in the soft data. The soft data currently calls for a big spike in inflation. So on this slide here, we see the red soft data series, which is looking at the regional manufacturing PMIs. Um, so like the Philly Fed, the New York one, uh, we take an average of the prices paid series. So it's a response to the survey. Companies say if they're paying more or paying less. And as we can see, there's been a huge spike in companies that are saying they have paid more in recent months. And this has a tight relationship with CPI. Again, the soft data series leads, you can see in the um, legend here, advanced three months, it leads the hard data series by about three months. So we just had the April CPI data report looked great. Inflation's coming down. However, if you look at the soft data, that says 
that this sort of nice slow fall in inflation is going to be short-lived. Now, again, it's important to remember these series do diverge from time to time. So it is entirely possible that the red line will slowly come down and converge with the blue line as opposed to vice versa. But this just helps to explain of what the concern or panic currently is for people looking at soft data, because the soft data is telling a very different story than the hard data is. And then just another quick example of this. This is a chart I also used in my last video uh, for a different purpose. We have a soft data series in blue. That is the University of Michigan expected change in employment with the unemployment rate. Again, the blue series is inverted, as I explained the last time I used it. But same story of the last slide, which is basically just that soft data is calling for a spike in the unemployment rate. So if you're here looking at hard data, unemployment rate looks really, really good. You might think that everything's fine. Maybe it is. But for the people that are looking at the soft data, again, this is a six month lead time. It shows that within a couple months, we're maybe due for a spike in the unemployment rate. And that's what I'm gonna leave you here today. I hope this was really informative. I hope you learned the difference between hard data and soft data. If you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel as we're gonna keep pumping out this educational content. Thanks for being here and I'll talk to you guys soon.